Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. It is approximately 1030 in Honolulu. It is Thursday, the 15th day of December, and this is the daily report for gold and silver. We have a mixed metals complex this morning with gold under pressure currently trading off about eight dollars on the day as you can see our current print 1567 that's correct 1567 silver up nominally up about eight cents putting it at just above 29 dollars per ounce traders we are looking at a weekly chart of the cash gold market as you can see this long red line represents the price drop that we have seen above 1700 to below 1600 all in this four day period that's four days in a row we have seen this market go down now today it actually has a logical or rational fundamental explanation right now as the federal reserve really did not announce any more stimulus measures on december 13th the fed maintained that and i'm quoting its expansion and refrained from taking new actions to bolster the economy now gold has dropped almost three percent this quarter and the dollar has really rallied up over two percent in terms of the dollar index of course that's a basket of six different currencies big picture here is that right now nobody is expecting qe3 in other words the printing of warm money which of course would really be a major bullish factor for gold very interesting scenario stock market stock market actually likes it a little bit you can see that we are recovering a little bit market is back up over 12 it's 12 1803 and that of course is the cash s p 500 in terms of where it is actually found support when we take a look at this bottom here of course you've got this doji here and it did go below this particular point but you can see on a rough basis some support around this area and so we'll have to see if that holds or if we'll get continued selling tomorrow and further downside in the u.s equities markets traders i've gone ahead and i've pulled up our daily chart it does have our elliott wave count but for this chart and this example i'm going to try to point out something a little bit different than just the elliott wave does history repeat itself that's a question we always ask ourselves you can see that i have highlighted two areas right here and right here this of course is 2009 the market is trading higher it goes to a new high this is right after it broke above a thousand dollars you can see that move right in here roughly say the first week right at the beginning of december of 2009 you see the market began to retrace you get that a b c retracement and you can see that that retracement which began in roughly december took roughly two to two and a half months before we actually got to the bottom and in terms of the cycles it happened near the year end and then recovered first part of the year after that market moved pretty much higher throughout the year at least through the mid part of the year you have another retracement here i now want to bring your attention to 2010 end of year and once again we had that triple top if you recall and this is where the market first broke really above that 1400 mark. It, it tested it a couple of times and then it also retraced as you can see right in here and the bottom itself came right around february here right around february and so the reason for bringing that up is my main question is this time we hit our top a little bit early in terms of the historical perspective you can see this is uh september right in here this is really where we get our top and then from september october november it moves up and now moving back down in december my question then becomes 
will we see a repeat where this market kind of meanders lower through the rest of the year kind of forms a base moves lower and then again in February finds it bo its bottom and then begins to move up we will have to see but what I do find that is quite interesting is that for the last two years in a row we have had significant tops come towards the end of the year November December this time a little bit earlier September and for the last two years we had bottoms that occurred end of January beginning of February right in that area it is something that is absolutely worth noting we've seen it two years in a row will this be the third that's something that we'll have to see in terms of how it plays out over 2012 and then lastly on this chart and it's also worth noting in terms of the time parameter or timeline that I am actually looking at the last two years had corrections that basically unfolded in approximately two months you can see that right in here December through February here also it was in February and it started back in November so it was a two month time frame we've gone at this point one two we're in our third plus month why is it so different well the wave count is the next cycle up in other words these corrections were more of a minor correction compared to this last correction which is this larger wave count that simply goes one two three four five a b c so in terms of the time context because it is one level up in terms of the wave count it is not that unusual for it to take this amount of time it's actually a much more logical time frame still looking at it could end at any moment but my best estimate would be beginning somewhere in January or February to see us come to the conclusion of this current correction we are currently looking at a daily chart in silver as I said silver is up very nominally we have gold currently trading off about ten dollars and when we look at silver it actually is up up about three cents on the day palladium up a little bit and platinum and gold lower the candle that is forming right now on a daily chart is a rickshaw man or a long-legged doji we'll have to see how it closes and my sentiment is when we look at in terms of some matching lows that we had back here after this drop all the way down to call it $26 just below that you can see that we have traded below that so in no way could you call it a matching low but it is now trading back above I still don't see this particular area on a technical basis on a technical basis to really be showing us any kind of real support one of the things that we want to look at though historically because in my opinion we really don't have any kind of major support really until 26 but we can look at certain lows and see if they match up and as you can see the best I could find and as I said I don't really believe it's going to be strong support but you can see as this market came up it found support here and you can see that that matches here when we also look back here it was resistance in this area and of course the best way for me to look for support or resistance is support and resistance are one in the same it simply depends on what side of the fence you're sitting on in other words on the way up this is resistance as it comes down it'll be support but it is that same area is that significant well we'll have to see but my sentiment is we really don't get major support major support until we drop back as I said $26 per ounce I'm basing that on this low right before this historical climb we get a matching low here and for that reason I have labeled this particular area as a target area that should provide some real support in the market if in fact the market continues to trade lower this secondary band of support that we're looking at right here where the market has genuinely traded off of we will have to see how it pans out but in my experience I wouldn't put a lot of credence or weight just yet without getting other technical indicators in other words confluence 
confirming that we found support here. So right now, I still believe we'll see this market under pressure, especially if it follows gold. And I think that gold has a little ways lower to go. Although, as I said, that could change on a moment's notice. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.